Welcome to the most treacherous terrain rallying has ever seen. The place that will make you question your suspension and damping tuning skills as you'll spend most of your time adjusting and readjusting those settings. But don't worry, because I'm gonna explain to you the whole process of getting the best tuning settings for your WRC1 car, which will get you through the stages like butter. So strap up and let's kick things off with the tuning. First things first, before any setup, is to gather whatever information you can about the track. The race is on dirt, which is a medium grip surface, and if there is another certain thing about Rally Kenya, is that the terrain is bumpy. Extremely bumpy. So in terms of alignment, I set the front toe angle for better cornering, while the rear toe angle for better stability. The front camber is set higher than the rear camber, because these tracks are very twisty and you're constantly steering from left to right, so in order to achieve maximum grip on those turns, you will need a higher camber value. The rear camber on the other hand is influenced only by the lateral motion of the car, but since the surface is not that grippy here like asphalt is, the wheels are sliding more on the road surface and the deformation is smaller. So too much rear camber will not be as beneficial in low grip situations. Onto the differentials, the job is simple, crank up the driving and braking lock, because otherwise the power will be sent to whatever wheel has less traction, so you won't be able to properly control the car, especially on corner exits. The preload helps you to control the oversteer when the car is coasting from corner entry to mid-corner, so for me these settings work like a charm. If you like more oversteer or understeer, play with this setting until you find your sweet spot. Now, the elephant in the room, damping and suspensions. Let's start with the obvious ones. Rebound as soft as possible and ride height as high as possible. Slow bump, fast bump and springs, they all work together to do the same thing, absorb bumps and jumps. So you can see here that I didn't go too soft with the slow bump, because a softer value got me hitting the bump stop too many times, destabilizing the car. Fast bump on the other hand, reacts to jumps mostly, so again, two softer values will make you hit the bump stop and lose control. If you set the bump division lower than this value, too many bumps will be transmitted as fast bumps, and because the fast bump is set a little bit stiffer than the slow bump, it won't be as efficient at absorbing the bumps. The spring rate will also be set pretty soft, which along with higher ground clearance will provide you with the best bump absorption. The balance between spring rate and slow bump was the most time consuming thing to set up right from this entire setup. Last but not least are the ARBs, which you should also set more on the softer side to let the wheels move more independently up and down over bumps and jumps. But don't worry, because on terrains like this, body roll is the least of your problems. On the braking tab, you can set the brake pressure quite high, but don't go too much on either side with the brake bias, because it can lead to excessive locking, and as we all know too well, locking means sliding, and sliding under braking means blowing out the corners. The values you see here work in perfect balance, so feel free to give them a try. The handbrake force helps you rotate the rear end of your car before U-turns and tight corners, and I can say that this value works like a charm. But feel free to adjust it to your own preference. The only thing left to adjust is the gearbox. For a twisty track like this one, with short straights, the best thing to opt for is short gears and short final drive. Since you will not be able to reach excessive speeds anyway, so you better focus more on the acceleration. But this track has a trick in its sleeve a 1 km long straight right before the end of the race. That's why you can see that I've lengthened the 5th gear significantly compared to the other gears, so I can reach speeds over 200 km per hour on that straight. If you found this video useful, please hit the like, share and subscribe buttons, leave your thoughts in the comments, and if you want to support me further, there is also a thanks button right below the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See you on the track, bye bye!